hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king 2 and today i'm going to be giving you part 8 of what if naruto had the rarest bloodline remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual share this to all of your friends via social media platform and also stay in tune for what if naruto was betrayed by hagoromo over in anime king 3 that i'll be posting later on over in anime king i post a brand new episode of what if naruto was an elite blue eye uchiha so go over there and enjoy that guys. And remember if you're new to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime king family. And thank you for all of your help and support. And yeah, without further ado, what do you say we begin this new episode? Start the intro. So the last part we left off, Naruto came back to the village as he spoke to the guards at the gate as he just finished taking care of the daimyo son to throw everything out of balance to make sure that peace reigned and continue on. As the next morning came, Konoha was buzzing with activities as someone had died. Mito Uzumaki had been found dead in her house. The alarms had been activated once the intruder had passed, as she was poisoned. When they had got there, she was still alive, but she just quickly called for Kushina to seal the night hill fox inside of her before she passed. Torun had came back to Kanoha rushing on the waters, as a man was furious. As he wanted to know who killed his sister, the man was beyond furious, the poison. Only Urchimar had something like that in his arsenal. As Urchimaru reported to them that it was missing. But it couldn't have been Urchimaru because the sneak was with Sir Toby when the attack happened. Torun was furious as he decided to do something that his brother Naruto warned him about. He should have listened as he was taking the Nine Tails away from Konoha. But him and Hoshira made a made a one sided pact if he was to take the Nine Tails away from Konoha without the current Hokai giving him a uh, go ahead. He was gonna die the moment he stepped foot out of Kanoha. But he didn't really care anymore. This time he was listening to his brother. As Harrison really couldn't do anything about it. Riss angering the Uzumakis. No one really wanted the Uzumakis anger at them. After all, the clan was rather deadly. But he ended up writing two notes before leaving Kanoha. The moment he set foot outside with Kushina, though, he died. His daughter was named the next clan head. A three days of silent went on in darkness as they mourned his death. As he got the letter, Naruto got it as a man apologized. He told Naruto to just leave Kanoha because of the way they are running right now, they will surely run everything into the ground. The clone came back to Naruto that took him over Danzo's body as Naruto saw how corrupted and well, in a poor state Kanoha was. To the rest of the nation it might seem like a rich, profitable village but on the inside it was broken down and the amount of messed up deals that Donzo had under going. As the Gato clan head was there as well as he saw. No reason for them to go up against Konoha they would surely destroy the village on their own at the way they were going. At the village Minato had been well, told to leave the orphanage. He didn't know why people hate him so much. When they looked at him they just seemed to get angry for some reason as he didn't know why. He went to the library where he found Jerem, the man who took him as an apprentice. As he asked him, Jerry told him that it was because of his father. Minato was confused as he wanted to know who was his father. As Jerry told him that he was a leader of Darkness Country. The both of them looked so much alike. It was Naruto. Minato was shocked to hear that. So yeah guys, it was basically what we left off. You guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So what do you say begin this new episode? Kushina loved living with Naruto. It was excited. How hectic and busy he was and yet still. He wanted to involve her in his day, using the small chances to teach her something new and interesting. During breakfast or lunch when they met up, he would show her something cool and told her to replicate it. It always fascinated her 
how much attention Ruthie gave her when they had time to speak. Like she was the most important person in the world. Her heart broke a bit when she noticed that he gave that attention to everyone else as well. But still, if she asked him anything, like what she told him this morning, he would remember. Despite running the entire country and talking to so many other people, he always remember what they talk about. He was a very busy man, he could be called away from his home at any point in time. So any chance she get to sit down and talk to him, she utilized it at the best as she could. If there was one thing that she did like when living with Naruto, was that he shared a bedroom with Tsuwaki. The logic was understandable. Their house in the suburb had a dining room, a parlor, a kitchen, a front and a backyard. Going upstairs, there was an attic, and two bedroom, and one bathroom. The tower was still being worked on. When Kushina found out that there was two rooms in the house that they would be staying in, she thought that she and Naruto would be sharing a room, and Tsuwaki would sleep by herself. During their first dinner, her face was incredibly red, thinking that was how the sleeping arrangement was going to go. But then she found that the two adults would be staying in the room over to the left. And she would be in the right room, by herself. Naruto noticed, of course, but he didn't know the reason. But Suwaki had looked down towards Kushina with a smirk, and a beaming look in her eye. And Kushina didn't like that that stone face, red eye, paper pale lady was sleeping in the same bed as her crush. She didn't like it one bit. I'm done using the shower Kushina called as she opened the door at the bathroom at the end of the hallway. She had a big towel wrapped around her torso and most of her legs and another towel wrapped around her hair. Okay, said Suwaki as she opened the bed to her sheer bedroom. She had on a pair of purple shorts, a white vest with a purple towel draped over her shoulder with a toothbrush between her lips. As she passed by Kushina and entered the bathroom, as she locked the door after herself, she looked rather tired. The time was currently 6 a.m. The house was not cramped and Naruto could definitely get a bigger house. The reason he did not was because he enjoyed the warmth and the hominess that the house provided. As Suwaki and Kushin didn't mind. As he allowed her to do what she wanted in her room. As long as it wasn't a mess and he bought her what she needed. The doorbell rang. I'll get it, said Naruto. As he walked out of the room. As he was in a pair of black pants that stopped right above his ankles. A green t-shirt with a pair of white flip-flops and as ever he was wearing his half face mask. His hair was messy than normal from sleep and there was sleep bags under his eyes. He eyes smiled at her as Kushina flushed. She was caught staring at her crush. He walked downstairs to open the door. Hello, he said. On the other side of the door was a boy in his late teens with midnight blue hair. His dark cat eyes were changing back to normal. A pair of ears were twitching on top of his head. Purple shirt, black shorts, and black sneakers. His shirt had a logo that read, Panther, food delivery. The boy smiled brightly as he present a scroll. Good morning, Lord Naruto, he said. I hope I didn't wake you. Nah. I've been awake, said Naruto, as he collected the breakfast delivery and went into his pockets. That's 500 Ryu, right? The boy cut him off, as he frantically waved his hands in front of him. No, you don't have to, sir, he said. No, no, said Naruto. You're here in record time. And he cut the ceiling scroll under his arm and brought out his wallet. You got my order right. It's only fair. He picked out a few notes as he spoke. Six donuts, green tea, lemon tea, hot chocolate, and a dab of honey. Lord Naruto, your satisfaction is enough payment, the boy said. His panther ears switched from left to right, like he was afraid of someone finding out that their lord pay for their services. The situation itself was very strange, a customer insisting on pain and adding a nice tip on top of it. Please, I insist. As he brought out six 100 Ryu notes and pushed it right in the boy's hands. Thank you, he said. The boy seemed like he was about to faint. Th thank you, sir, he said. Naruto smiled and closed the door as the boy ran back towards the Panda Clan Cafe back in the capital. As Naruto placed a scroll down the table as he marched back upstairs. So Waki called out to him that she was finished bathing. The other day had been very late and long for them. So they were too tired to wake up and prepare breakfast. That is why they were ordering in. He entered the bathroom as Suwaki was rubbing down her hair in their bedroom. The delivery system worked by messenger eagles. A eagle was sent to the nearest restaurant with what they wanted. The system was a bit flawed, seeing that not everyone was near a messenger eagle and the birds could only be attending one order at a time. This problem could be easily solved with the invention of a telephone for walkie-talkies were exclusively for the police only. As Nerd did not add a communication seal on the entrance seal that he placed on every citizen. The entrance seal, the tattoo on the back of their hands, 
we're always keeping updates like the person age name occupations like dislikes height weight everything the tattoo in the back of their hand recorded everything about them but his inventors are getting really close to making telephones his ninjas had recently come back from a mission to Kumo to steal a simple telephone no one was wiser the idea not was to replicate it but to make it better for darkness Suwaki so exited the bedroom as she was dressed in her full combat suit she gently knocked on Kushina's door as she opened her head poked inside she saw this seven year old girl searching for something to wear that day someone will be coming over to look after you you're both free to go and explore the capital but make sure you do not leave without our permission try and enjoy yourself Kushina turned all right she said oh and breakfast is donut and tea the three of them ate the breakfast the sugary donuts after Naruto finished bathing and Suwaki gave each of them two on a plate with their respective tea green tea for Naruto lemon for Suwaki and chocolate for Kushner. the girl was stuttering through a story of her first encounter on a gato boy that was around her age when he first discovered his clay bloodline half of his body was melting off and like a child would react he started to scream and cry after all he was just seven years old until his father came on the field and calmed him down his father used his own clay release to reform his son's body and promised to teach him how to maintain the ability as the father had explained to them that it was normal it was a part of his bloodline Naruto munched his donut had to admit the Gato father had taken command of the situation very well as it had happened in front of so many peoples as Kushina said that it was a complete shock people think that the boy was melting I think your babysitter has a Gato teammate said Naruto he glanced towards Sawaki who nodded she can take you to the training ground and you can see some of them in action it's really fascinating that must be her said Sawaki after she finished saying that the doorbell rang Kushina turned towards Sawaki in surprise as Naruto simply chuckled she can smell blood and hear hearts from up to five miles away it is impossible to sneak up on her said Naruto learn from the best said Sawaki as she made her way towards the door a cheery voice could be heard good morning Lady Sawaki you must be Suzui please come in as Sawaki came back to her seat to sit down as a teen with long red hair in her she had glittering purple eyes and a bright smile she was in a dark yellow shirt black shorts and sandals with a katana on her back wrapped around her forehead was a dark country forehead protector the girl snapped in attention when she saw her lord there Jenny and Suzuki Uzumaki reporting for duty Lord Naruto no need to be so formal Suzuki said Naruto it's sky blue eyes shining she instantly blushed as she tried to turn her eyes away from the captivating sight of his eyes as after all he was many of the girl's crushes including hers as Naruto motioned towards Kushina I'm sure you know Kushina Kushina she will be the one looking after you today or any day she said as she tucked her hair behind her ears I can help any day she said she coughed in her face as Suwaki looked at her lifting one eyebrow she shot her hand down to Kushina as she quickly changed the topic you can call me Susu Lady Kushina oh Kushina is fine said Kushina as she shake her hand nice to meet you well Suzui so I can I will not be back until later in the night I hope this isn't an inconvenience to you oh definitely not my lord she said that's good you two are free to go anywhere as long as it is in the capital and child friendly Susu bobbed her head in compliance do you know how to cook the easy stuff yes she said you're the motion for her to go on ramen rice tomato sauce before she could continue Naruto spoke that should be okay we have it all in the kitchen he said in case you're about in the mood for anything you can't make there's a nice restaurant up to the street you can't miss it Suwaki got up as she finished her tea as she picked up the plates we'll leave the house key with you said Suwaki if you lose it go to the police station and they will open the door for you as the house had a reflective seal on it just in case anyone tried to force enter the house that could withstand a rhino attack and well give off electrocution if anyone tried to break in police stations were the only place that had the counter seal the police would check the back of her hand for the entrance and the citizen seal and she had that at the back of her hand and then they would follow up what she wanted them to do also said Naruto you're free to show her the training grounds got it and we're about out of the capital Susu nodded we can hang out tomorrow Kushina said Naruto as he reached forward and ruffle the girl's here she bobbed her head happily at the contact keeping herself back from gushing at the touch as Naruto got to his feet we'll be on our way he said have a nice day said Susu not too long after they left Susu locked the door as Boatra and Kushina made their way towards the nearest train ground as 
Susu had her hands behind her head as she was walking calmly, cushioning a glance around as she took in all the sights. The center of the capital where the large building was being created, she could see from here. Cool, huh? said Susu. Yeah, said Kushina. The country is way better than it's ever been, said Susu. As they made their way, a cold breeze washed over the boat of them as winter was approaching. How long have you lived here? I was born here, actually. Wait, what? My dad and mom moved here years ago, and they had me in the northern region. Fourteen years ago, the civil war was at its hottest. But the Susu parents, who refused to flee the country, her birth was a glimmer of hope for the family. The royal clan was too afraid to attack my parents. They weren't in the rebel forces, but the royal clan stayed the hell away from them. It must have been hard. The civil war, I mean, said Kushina. Susu shrugged. I honestly can't remember that much about the war, she said. I was seven when it ended, and my dad spent most of her time teaching me how to control my chakra at the back of our house. All I know is one moment there's a war, and the next there is not. Her cheeks then turned red. Leader Naruto had stayed at her house once, she said. As Kushina felt her cheeks heat up as well. My dad used to tell me ghost stories. So much of them. Leader Naruto is so awesome. He's the reason I want to be a ninja, you know? Um, did you... Kushina poke her fingers together, shyly. Did you hear the one about Lord Naruto wrestling? A mountain grizzly. Yeah, said Susu. I heard that he was on a personal training mission. Some of the... Inc. clan members want to make a manga about it. Kushina squeaked at the idea as she slowly came out of her shell. Yeah, but they need his permission first. For obvious reasons. He think a manga about him is too pretentious. So he didn't allow it. Pretentious? Kushina said. Well, he doesn't want to look like a cocky bastard, said Susu. Ah, I get it, said Kushina. That sucks. Yeah, it does, said Susu. So, you're a genin, said Kushina. I got my headband last year. Nakamura Sensei is thinking about sending our team to Kiri for June exams. Um, is it hard being a ninja of this country? Susu tossed her head as she leaned backwards. Hmm, yeah. It's really, really hard being a ninja of dark country. We need to spend five years in the academy doing beginner training, and after graduation, things get harder year by year training, missions, non ally relationship doing missions, stuff like that. There are so many expectations piled on our shoulders. So many people look up to us for protection and help. So many people, our allies included, depend on our strength and our skill. We Ninja of Dark had a standard that we have to measure up to. Sometimes, some people can't measure up to it and they end up quitting. Then, Susu Finch for her. Why am I still a ninja? She said. She placed her hand behind her head as she closed her eyes with a smile on her face. Because I love this country so much and I don't want to see anything bad happen to it. As a ninja, I am literally putting myself in danger. And it makes me so happy to know that every mission I go on, no matter the minor ones, our country get stronger, she said. Then what about the people that quit? Don't they love the country? Kushina asks. Only a few people quit, not as many as you think. But even so, they do things that can be equal to ninja in what they do. They become weaponsmiths, doctors, scientists, electricians, engineers, diplomats, traveling merchants, a lot of things. As Susa smiled, you will be surprised on how many people want to make leader proud. Hey, there's one of my teammates, she said, as she held on to Kushina's hand, as she started to call him over. Hey, Gonzo, you're rotten a piece of camel dub. What's up, she said. Meanwhile, at Kanoha, training ground six, Sometimes Jiraiya wonder what would have happened if he had pressed down harder on Naruto to become a student, then letting Urchimaru train the future leader of darkness. Kanoha could have had a powerful ally, held two powerful allies if he counted Tsuwaki. If only he had twisted Naruto's arms harder, if only he had drawn him closer using his student, then Kanoha, the entire place won't be in this current situation. Now they are without their Uza alliance. The sign was disregarding Kanoha authority and darkness is coming up and making their own name. If he had just done things differently back in the past. If only. If only. Damn it. Not a day go by when Jerry did not regret. Not. Taking root and his student back then. But fate was giving him a chance to correct history. To rewrite his mistake. Without a shadow of a doubt Minato was a once in a lifetime prodigy. A genius amongst geniuses. All Jerry had to do was point the boy in the right direction. And allow the child to run wild. It was similarly. Like Naruto. Orochimaru merely gave him pointers, ran information and jutsu into his head, and set him on his own path, and he went wild. And Naruto wasn't a genius like Minato at this age, but he was no less a terror on the battlefield. Because, here's it, if his sense was to be called the Kami of Shinobi, 
Then you're supposed to be referred to as a yummy of Shinobi. The blonde was already a ghost. But he needed the right battle, another catalyst to give him a boost in name. Harrison and the other high ranking Kunoa Shinobi didn't want to acknowledge it. But there was a big possibility that he was still getting stronger. Yami of Shinobis. It sent chills down Jerry's spine. Minato could be someone that could match Naruto though. If he got the right training from the right someone at the right time. This time, Jerry would do the right thing. Minato Namikaze had two. A faintest, water and lightning. Just like Naruto, the latter was more dominant than the former, just like Naruto as well. The difference was that Naruto had two bloodline lightning release and smoke release. Minato only had lightning release in his case, but not like Naruto. Minato didn't have smoke release and combining his lightning and water only result electrified water, which was rather deadly. At the age of 11, Minato would already separate his lightning and place it in different parts of his muscles that could increase his speed up to tuning speed. For now, Jiraiya focused on training Minato's mind until he entered the academy. As you remember the first question that Sir Toby had asked him, What is your ambition, Brat? he said. Minato looked up from his book of Genjutsu. Hmm? Well, said Jiraiya. Is it okay for you to have two? asked Minato. Of course, said Jiraiya. My first ambition is to bring justice to Konoha by killing my father. Jiraiya glow at the words, savoring how the boy gritted his teeth in anger at his father. And your second ambition, he asks. I want to become the next Okagi, said Minato. Time skip. At Dark Country, winter was horrible in Dark Country. A snowstorm would come in from the east, covering the entire of darkness, putting them in a terrible cold. It passed through Water Country, with the already frigid air coming into Darkness Country making it extremely cold for them. It's the worst of the snowstorm. It was always worse on Darkness than any other country. The weather phenomenon, at the way the weather simply curved into darkness country, baffled them all, even Ruto. Because the strange thing was, it came from the east and slammed into darkness with so much ferocity, the cold was intense. But when it moved on to the other countries, it became weaker, quickly, and then it returned back like it was recharging itself for the next time when it rolled up around. The storm lasted for a whole month, and even after it went away, the snow wouldn't melt until next month which would seep into the next year, the New Year's. It would result into a forced shutdown of all services, including food delivery. Traveling merchants was a travel that was harder to perform. Guarding the border as well. And office work turned to a home affair. The hospital needed to be stacked at all times so the medics, the doctors, when their shift was over, they could be escorted back to their homes. Yes, it will be a very busy time for Naruto ninjas. Wisely, he orders people to stack up on food, water, warm clothes for the next two months, and in case of large families that blew through rations rather quickly, they were permitted to call for emergency supplies. It wasn't that people were not allowed outside, but no one could really go outside in the blizzard storm. The house were reinforced with seals, so nothing would go wrong with them, with the howling wind and the snow. But through this all, they still persevere. A handful of people did leave the country though, the allied villages, because their health could not handle the weather. At the moment, Naruto was beating with the dark country, director of the natural bank for how best they can deal with the blizzard and how they are dealing with it so far. As you know my lord, winter is just around the corner. Amara, she is from the ink clan as she was behind her decks. As Naruto took the book, as he leaned back and went through it. Compared to last year, we have seven more times in our account than last year. As it was rather impressive as Naruto looked at the overall amount. I've sent out notice since the last three weeks for families to begin preparations for winter and traders inside and outside the country to finalize their yearly salary to the bank. I am aware, said Naruto as he still went through the book. She continued. I have all the trading reports, she said. It's all summarized on page 30. Anyway, I have noticed a spike in families and individual saving more of their personal cash in the banks. Understandable, said Naruto. This bank is a country safety net. If the economy stumble or fall, then you will have something that they have saved up to keep them afloat until everything normalized, said Naruto. The norm in the country was that 10% of every working salary, whether they were civilians or ninjas, barring teenagers, apprentices, or people that were still in school, the 10% was sent to the bank. It was a money that they could not touch. But if a crisis, like for example the winter, were to hit or something, they can be assured that they would have the money that they could fall upon. By some unlikely chance a house was to be knocked down, then it could be rebuilt for free. But the items inside, they will have to replace them with their own savings. After all, they could focus on repairing their things, seeing that the village 
had free education, healthcare, houses, and employments. Seeing that recent mission spikes have been coming in a lot, things were getting easier and better for dark citizens. It says here that the electric company came in for loans in Ruto. Yes, said Amara. The engineers came up with the idea to solve the winter blackout situation, but they need more funding than usual. Their idea has to do with SEALs and our very own engineer schematics. Nurka glanced over. Hmm, impressive, he said. Water was run directly into the house, so it was free. Also, was electricity, but the generator get rather heated, so it had to be turned off for at least two hours and light did not stay on for the entire day. Buy another generator like that was expensive, so in order to push money into the engineers to create a different source of electricity for the country that would work all year long. And given the fact that electricity couldn't be on for 24 7 the blizzard somehow phone away and damage it. This has happened for the last 3 years and Nurta has charged his inventors to do something about it. The only problem I see right now is for the sand farm, Amara said. Don't worry about that said Nurta, Tetsu is using some of the loans to build a greenhouse. And even so the storm won't get far outside of our western border as wind country was west of darkness and wind country was almost blistering hot all year long. Those who want to know how they can help through the winter. Tamaki, send me a letter yesterday said Naruto. Her ninjas can come in with emergency ration if we need them. I told her okay, when we need them, we'll call. Naruto turned towards Suwaki as she was there the entire time in a chair, not saying anything. Do you want to read this, he said. She glanced at the book and took it. As for this moment, she was once again his assistant. Instead of the BLAK commander, her deputy, was could handle matters until she resumed it. I am not as good with numbers as Lady Amara, but I'll try my best. You flatter me, said Amara, but it was true. Amara and most of her clan were good with money. The clan of Fuinjutsu masters have been doing, well, when it comes to accounting, for centuries now. Amara proceeded to remind Naruto that the end of the season festival for ninjas and civilians academy that was happening in a few days would feature a ballet dance from her clan. The festival for both academies were held together and decided by the director where to keep it. This year it was going to be held in the civilian academy. So the ninja students would go over there as Amara invited Naruto to her clan to watch the last of the dancing practice before the event. Taking Kushina to the ink clan would brighten her horizon to show her a different work of Fuinjutsu that was in her clan mates. As after that they wrapped up their meeting. Time skip. At the hidden waterfall office of the waterfall leader, this is your only chance to redeem yourself an old man spat. Fleeing instead of facing your end. Disgraceful. What do you want me to do? A man said. Go to darkness and kill the ghosts. The man's face went blank hearing that. He should be weaker than the first Okagi, the leader said. It was a leader of the waterfall country. He should be weak enough for you to handle, Kakazu. Our intel say that the ghost is much weaker in the day than night, and attacking him in his home territory would divide the attention between reducing property damage and loss of life. The Kage of Waterfall laugh as he looked towards Kakazu. Compared to the Hokage, Hashirama, the ghost is chicken shit. I will not fail, said Kakazu. Oh, I know you won't, because if you do, you will have nothing left in Waterfall, and you will be branded as a defector, so that darkness will not turn to us. If you're so scared of them, why do you want me to kill their leader? Isn't it obvious? To get on Konoha's good side again. We kill their enemy and they become our trusted allies. We shall be invincible. As you say, said Kakazu. I'll take my leave. Make sure you don't come back without that brat's head. There's a sizable bounty on it. And I'll give you 60% when you return. Of course. That was what Kakazu fought for. Not for a family because he had none. Not for the village because he didn't give a crap about this place. He fought for money. Because he loved money. There was nothing in this world better than money. He was the strongest shinobi of waterfall. For the reason. Because he loved money more than anything. Time skip. Capital. South region. Main road. At dark country. Blood. Looked up to her teacher. As they made their way down a... Tide road. Sensei. Hmm? He said. As he smiled at those that passed him and were bowing towards him. I've noticed you don't like using carriages, she said. Walking is a healthier option, Sue. It's good for your bones and your heart. Besides, we're not really in a hurry. And it's such a nice day, he said, as he glanced around at the light blue sky and the thick clouds around them that were just hung in the air calmly. A gentle breeze. 
The air is cool and clean and there isn't much foot traffic because people are stocking up for the winter. Only some carriage moved on the road as some family was moving to other regions of the country. The riders and carriage wave at them as they wave back happily. Walking gave me a chance to exercise, he said. The option of getting a carriage was offered to him and as usual he declined as he walked a few kilometers to the southern dock. It's been a while since I've been in a good old extract mission where I can stretch my legs and you know, run wild, you know. I think leading is making me lazy, so didn't you go on a mission two days ago, she asked. That was barely a challenge. Kill a monk. I could have sent a team of Jenny to handle that. What about the nature trucker man that you sent, she asked. I could not jeopardize the mission by giving chase after him. Well, I personally don't think that you're getting lazy, Nurtin Sensei. Just because leading a country was a full-time job, it doesn't mean that he didn't set aside an hour or two to do some personal training on the weekend. If you want, we can spar after the meeting. I came up with this technique that I'm positive that will land on you. Her red eyes burned in determination as Nurka simply chuckled. Oh really? Tell me about it, he said. No, she said. Aw, come on. We spar, then I'll tell you, she said. He poked her in the rib. That's not gonna work on me again. Are you sure you don't want to tell me, he said. As he poked her in the rib again. Sensei, stop. I'm not telling you, she said. As she had a smile on her lips, her cheeks threatened to turn red at the adoring looks on the people that were passing by. But she fight it as she walked in front of her master, refusing to meet eye contact with him. Are you sure, said Naruto. She bit her bottom lip. Her mind was torn between two sides right here and now. Sometimes she feel like he knew how much effect he had on her. With the way he always teased her, always poked her and he patted her head. Always prodded her for her secret, for her attacks and her defense, or the ones that she came up with on her own. This has happened many times before, as he prodded her to tell him, and she did. And when they got to the training ground, he always find a way around it. But she just loved to hear him praise her after she tell him her attacks. He would pat her head, smile, and tell her that he was proud of her. Damn it. He always had a way to weasel the information out of her, even though he didn't touch her. Hell, the only secret that she kept was that he knew. Well, but he was denying that she loved him. Well, he knew now, but still. Apart from her mind wonder if there was anything about her that he did not know. Sue, he said. As she melted. Okay, she said. It go like... Lord Naruto! Naruto had snapped towards the approaching DC operative. The man skidded right and stopped in front of them as he dropped to a knee. Five more DC ninjas gave Naruto and Suwaki a wide berth to listen to the emergency. He said in a hushed tone to not rile up the people. Kakazu of Waterfall is trying to breach the north border as we speak. What a coincidence, said Naruto. Suwaki and I was just talking about how I'm getting lazy. The man blinked at his leader, confused. What? Tell them to direct Kakazu somewhere clear, away from the dark forest. I'll be there in a minute. Roger, sir, the man said. Still a bit confused, but he instantly went out to deal with the order. You can tell me your secret attack later, Su. As he placed a hand on her shoulder, let's go. As the both of them vanished in black smoke, Time skip. That's enough! Those words froze everyone in place. Kakazu felt a chill run down his spine as he was holding a hot old Kunoichi by her face. He was about to kill her with a water bullet jutsu right through her forehead. Blue eyes was directly behind him. Fast, Kakazu thought, as Naruto was fully clothed in his leader robe and his white brim hat. How the hell did he get behind me? Kakazu asked himself as he was frozen in place. From the feeling of death looming over his shoulder. How the hell didn't I sense him? As Naruto eyes darkened as he saw the scattered bodies around the waterfall ninja. As it seems that Naruto had grew five times larger. As he chuckled darkly. The DC medics rushed around. They could not feel the killing intent of their leader. As it wasn't focused on them. As they quickly got the injured and rushed him back to the village. One grateful medic came forward and wrenched. The Kunoichi out of Kakazu hand, who still had to move a single muscle. As the girl glared at Kakazu, but she saw her leader had this, so she quickly leave. As Kakazu could not move, he could not breathe. He felt like there was an invisible stone on his throat and on his chest. As Naruto laughed, his blue eyes radiating death. His body radiated with killer intent, strong enough to dig Kakazu's feet down to the ground by his ankles. It takes a lot to defeat my defense score, and for that I applaud your determination. But you see, what I don't like. He placed a hand on Kakazu's shoulder, a light, gentle hand, and Kakazu's knees slammed down into the ground. 
I don't like how you went about trying to get my attention. Kakazu gritted his teeth painfully. It worked, didn't it? Oh, it certainly did, said Naruto. As black smoke rushed back into Naruto's body, as he returned back to his normal size, I will give you one chance to get my bounty, Kakazu. If you fail, I will not only kill you, I will have waterfall population, whether you're acting on your own devices or not. All it took was one order. His ninja would gladly do it. None of his allies were allied to waterfall in way. As Nerd removed his cloak and hat and hand it towards Suwaki, try and flee and I'll give chase. You should pray that you already killed yourself before I catch you if you try to run. Huh. You don't seem so tough, said Gakas as he grunted, as he struggled to stand back up. Oh, said Naruto. I was the one that pushed. Hoshirama to the brink, said Kakazu, as he poked a hand in his chest. Well, that wasn't what I heard, said Naruto. I heard he hit you around and you ran away, with your tails between your legs. Lies! Calm down, calm down, fighting me, while you're so riled up, won't do. Don't talk to me like that. I'm older than you. A new batch of defense core ninjas spread around them, in a clean circle. Well, you should know that age mean nothing when you anger the wrong person. You're supposed to be smarter than that. As Naruto spoke to him like a dumb student, and he was a teacher of a man in him, Suwaki stood there holding her teacher's robe and his hat. As Naruto did not show a anger, a single rage towards Kakazu. What he felt earlier, that feeling of death behind him was now completely gone. So he was... Don't you dare look down on me, said Kakazu. On the contrary, I expect a lot from you, Waterfall Shinobi. As Naruto looked at the DC members that had formed a circle around them, you say that you push Hashirama to the brink. I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. As long as you push me to the brink as well. Easy. You'll be dead before you know it, said Kakazu. Mmm. I like your confidence, said Naruto. Suwaki walked and leaned to her teacher. I smell. Five different hearts inside of him besides his own. Each of them a different blood type. Is that so? The Jienko bloodline, said Naruto. So he's not likely to die after one hit. That's great. Kakazu narrowed his eyes at Suwaki. I... We'll get her bounty too, he said. One thing at a time, said Naruto. You need to first kill me, he said. Now, show me that strength you've been talking so much about. Kakasu waited for Naruto to drop in a fighting sand so he could read it and find any holes in defense. But after 10 seconds, Naruto still didn't even move a single muscle. He just looked back at him with a rather lazy look on his face. Well, Kakasu could see openings all over Naruto's form, all over him. He grinned as he pushed his fighting style to something stronger and faster. Interesting choice. The falling meteor fist. I haven't seen that in some years now. Suwaki so sealed away his clothing as she jotted down his words. The style used fire chakra on the user's knuckle to scorch the opponent with heavy blows, whittling them down to ash rather quickly. It was a very explosive fire style. And true to Nurto words, Kakazu fist started to glow red. As Nurto remembered fighting a whole wave of star, Country ninjas that use that fighting style. He hadn't bothered to learn it, but he knew a few counter move of it. Naruto barely turned his head to the side as a blow. Blow past his face with tremendous speed. Kakazu had rushed in rather quickly. A column of fists exploded from Kakazu's knuckles. The ninjas behind Naruto went through hand sign, hidden art, clear release, impenetrable, fortress. The clay rose up from the ground and formed a wall. The fire slammed into the wall and bathed it black before cracking it. The wall fell down, and then they saw Kakazu, with a black eye and a bleeding ear, leaping away from their master. What the? Those who were not being blocked by the wall could barely saw what happened. After Naruto dodged an attack, he jabbed the man in his stomach four times. Then a left hook across his face burst in Kakazu's ear jump, and a wicked punch right to the face, damaging his eye. Kakazu swore under his breath. I... I didn't even see him coming. As his ear bled freely, and his jaw was rattled, his stomach was in pain as well, as he felt the four fists connected into his gut painfully. That was when blood and black thread rushed out of his mouth, as his mask and his face was blown off, as the blood freely flew along with the threads, as he clenched his stomach. The human body could not accommodate five additional human hearts, so the hearts of his former victims were located at the front of his body. A bit outside of his stomach was still under his jacket, hidden from view. The four blows that Naruto had given him had burst four of those hearts. Those blows were nerve jabs, leaving Kakazu with just his fire heart and his birth heart. Black thread riled madly out of his mouth 
as he clenched over. He looked at the man that had thrown his body and his bloodline against him. Black thread now leaking out of his right eye. As Naruto stepped forward and he was gone. Takazu winced and knee planted in his stomach. His body was thrown back but his face was grabbed as he was yanked back towards Naruto. As Naruto used the other hand to launch punches after punches at Takazu's torso. Naruto dropped the man and stepped back. Walking around him calmly as Kakazu struggled to get back to his feet. Hidden art, lightning release. Blink one, two steps, said Naruto. The black markings of his arm start to crack with lightning and his painted black nails start to release smoke. Want to see something cool, Naruto asks. Kakazu dashed forward towards Naruto's fist, burning red with hot flames. Water release, snake egg, torture technique. He bent out of the way and knocked Kakazu's hand up in the air so the fire went upwards. As he planted his fist into Kakazu's face and exhale, a water moccasin shot out of his mass mouth and covered Kakazu's head. In pure water, Kakazu fell on the ground the fist still digging into his face as he gasped. Accidentally inhaling some of the water, Orochimaru was the one that taught Naruto that technique. The snake summoner had a python that was made from water, but Naruto was a water moccasin. As Kakazu inhaled some of the water as it went down his throat. They start to break apart like droplings, like eggs, as they settle down inside Kakazu's lung. Kakazu coughs as he swallows some more eggs. The process is very painful. Waterfall Shinobi. Your Jienko bloodline is ineffective against internal. Efixation. Nerd removed his fist from the water snake, as Kakazu was still covered. If only you had used a more sensible means of coming from my body, I would have used a more painful, swift death. Kakazu choked as he claw at his neck and his chest. Gasping for ear but none was coming. As Naruto bent down and said in a low demonic voice, there is no dignity for the dam. His skin started pale as he struggled, trying to grasp on Naruto's leg. As there was nothing he could do. His limbs fall down as his head hit the ground hard. His body shook uncomfortably as he was still trying to fight it all but there was no coming back from this. His eyes went blank as he coughed once more and he died completely. Naruto placed his finger on the man's neck, dispelling the water snake. He was satisfied to not feel any pulse. He straightened up and waited for his ninjas to go on with their function, as he discarded the body into the dark forest for the wild animals to eat. Suwaki so approached Naruto. Gather your operatives. Tell them we move out to waterfall right now, said Naruto. A glee enters Suwaki's eyes as she tapped the seal in her arm, sending five pulses. She got two pulses back. Done, she said. As she then unsealed, Naruto grinning mass. Fifty black operatives appear behind Naruto, kneeling. As Naruto slides his mask over his head, his back turned to them. His wicked grin was on his face. As his blue eyes glow from underneath his mask. Time to go. Time skip. Blood. 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 The massacre would ever be there for the history of the country. And it would drive fear into the hearts of those near the continent. The first thing they did was count the number of people in the village. Well, no. The first thing they did was murder the gatekeepers. Then they swept around the border, slaughtering anyone they saw. Then they steal their identities, using their chakra to enter the village through the waterfall defenses. There were two ways in the village and the 50 BLEK ninjas stormed through both. The shadows of the country assassins spared no one. They killed half of the people in the village, wet in the ground with blood. Slaughtering anyone that saw. Some of them didn't even know what happened. They were talking to their friends and families. The next moment they were on the ground, bleeding, dying. Arrows rained down as it sliced through people's skull, directly into their hearts and through their eyes. It turned into mass fear as they tried to run, but the exits were blocked. They were trapped like cattle. As Shuriken slit through some of their throats with some pristine through. As it sliced them in a way where they drop and blend out suffering, the village did not have any allies and their daimyo was a cowardly man who preferred to keep to himself than get himself caught up in anything too dangerous. So no one would step towards darkness. As Naruto was ready for the letters from angry leaders and maybe a few kagis, they sighed on the rhetorical strike didn't take more than two seconds. Mass genocide fell fitting for Kakazu's attack on his border. Sawaki so rushed past a couple as she stabbed the man in the Senbon. The wife didn't even saw the man get stabbed. The man turned towards his wife. Honey, what's wrong? What's wrong, she says. She started to back away. He grabbed her by the throat as he squeezed the life out of her. 
When he was done, he removed the same man and stabbed himself in the head. Phoenix dropped down from the building as she delivered two strikes to two running women. Their hearts burst with flames as she spotted her leader walking out of the building that belonged to the waterfall leader. As Naruto had the man's head in his hand, the man's face was twisted in agony and fear. As Naruto held on to his severed head, Phoenix, being as clumsy as she is, ended up slipping because of the blood as she fell on the floor. Damn it, again? As Naruto stood right in the center of the village, gather around, gather around. Master wants to say something, said was, as he called everyone. The other BLAK operatives gather all the surviving people as they were forced to go on their knees. The people cried desperately as ninjas covered in black clothing hover above them. Wisely enough, the ninja population was cut down more than half and the civilian were spared for the most part. As one of the black ops were in a lion mask told him to be quiet as he quickly quieted down. The man was 7 feet tall and looked just dangerous. As Naruto spoke, I don't care about justifying this attack as he swung the decapitated head without a care in the world. In my profession, justifying murderer is too troublesome. Just know that your leader brought this on all of you. As he brought up the head, people moaning fear and terrified look on the leader's face. Part of his face was completely broken in as it was hit on the decks over and over. And it wasn't a sword or a tonto that was used to take off his head. It was a rusty spoon. He had suffered a lot before he was granted death. As Nurta eyes searched through the crowd, he threw the head towards a normal man. You, Squirrel, pushed through the people and yanked the man to his feet. He was in a chuni flap jacket. You will be the new leader of Waterfall, said Naruto. Congratulations. Squirrel pushed the man back down. Quite the promotion, right guys, said Naruto. But no one said anything. Lion snarled at all of them as they all nodded. There we go, said Naruto. Now, I don't want any of you retaliating, okay? Or else we'll come back and we'll finish the job. He lifted his arms and shrugged. This is the price that you all pay for your leader, stupidity. As Naruto simply hopped off the crate and made his way. There was no one left to attack him outside or even defend the village. They were all dead. The people that were here were shivering in fear. They couldn't do anything. Oh also, we're taking half of the money in your reserves and half of any valuables we can find. Hope you all don't mind. He didn't really wait for a reply because he didn't need one. He didn't need their permission. But guys, the end episode right here. If you want to see the next part, you want to do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on that bell location to stay posted. But more for now, see you guys soon. Peace.